Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So let me make sure I'm up. I'm seeing green on my end. I'm seeing myself moving and shaking out of my peripheral vision. Let me check my sound before we light this candle. Um, guys, if you are enjoying the show and you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And please hit the bell at the bottom to make sure that when I come up, I do shows all the time. I mean... Look, I try to make sure that my patrons, the people who essentially donate to help contribute to keep the show going, get their money's worth for the show. And so, A, I enjoy doing it, but B, I also want to make sure they get their money's worth. And so, I do shows all the time. Um, I'm an insomniac, so I may do shows at 3 in the morning. I am always floating about, especially if there's news, news afoot that needs to be talked about. So, please hit the bell so you can get the notifications when I'm up. Um, and like I said, please hit subscribe if you enjoy the show. And for that matter, if you really enjoy the show, please consider contributing because, yes, they're attacking us from the standpoint of ads. This is amazing. Some of the stuff that they demonetize. CNN writing, the slight tangent, CNN writing the article last time was like this kind of ad apocalypse. Um, but they demonetize them of anything. Like, I don't necessarily know how Nazis were able to get away with demonetization. I did a video saying paging Jake Uger, and they demonetize a video saying paging Jake Uger. It's amazing. That being said, let's move it on. Um, tomorrow, I have Gerald Horn. He's going to be here at 5 p.m. Gerald Horn is going to be an amazing guest. He's a Princeton um, professor dealing with black studies and everything else. He, the man is amazing. I saw him in one of the videos, and someone mentioned him and I looked him up and I realized that I had seen him before I just didn't necessarily have a name associated with him but I remember seeing him in that specific video because he said such mind-blowing things in the video that I saw him in so he's going to be on the show that is going to be an amazing show um Michael Horn is going to be here on the 1st of May um I have to be honest I am I don't know how I feel about this particular guest if I'm being flat honest um He's associated with the Billy Myers case. He contacted me. I didn't contact him. And he wanted to come on to the show. I told him I was skeptical about what he was saying, what his claims were. But I, I would welcome him to the show nonetheless, despite my skepticism. So he will be here on May 1st, again at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, the first one is going to be amazing. The second one should be damn interesting. Horn deals with the Billy Myers case. Um... I never use that case because I, I always find issues with that case. And it's so controversial that, you know, it's like, why do I want to use the weakest case in order to make my, my argument? But nevertheless, Horn is a full-throated proponent of this. And we're going to have a conversation. And he's going to he's going to endure my skepticism. Let's say it that way. Um, and so either way, that still should be interesting. So there's that. So for, for tonight... The guy in the picture is James Zogby. James Zogby is a Democratic functionary, um, Sanders supporter. He, he said something on Twitter, and Jimmy Dore responded to him, lampooning him for it. And Jimmy Dore is right on this. I'm sick of people whining. If you're a lefty, I'm sick of your whining. James Zogby, I would, I would imagine he would consider himself a lefty. As he's functioning in the Democratic Party with this thing of taking back the ship and we're boarding the ship and we're going to fight for the Democratic Party and everything else. And in the meanwhile, we're going to sheepdog people into the party while we fight to rein control back from this political whatever. It's a burning boat. Jimmy Dore responded to this comment by Zogby. I blame Miss Wickle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was the wrong video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought that was James Zogby. Um, so right here. Once again, the DCCC is pushing out progressives in favor of the handpicked clients with their track record. They ought to step aside and let voters decide. By the way, what you consider to be chaos is really democracy. It works if you give it a chance. Now, he's talking about this. Fearing chaos, National Democrats plunge into midterm primary fights. Now, this article is essentially saying what we already know. 
the DCCC is making a choice on who it wants. It is, for the most part, backing establishment candidates. So it is out there attacking progressive and lefties. What Zogby is saying is, hey, let voters decide. Stop interceding into this and stop putting your weight behind, essentially, the more establishment picks. I'm sick of the whining. Jimmy Dore responded, why don't you support a party? Oh, here we are. Let's flip that first. Why don't you support a party that doesn't sabotage its own members? What is the purpose of sheepdogging progressives into a party that cheats and smears them? Serious question. Serious question. Now, Zogby responded to that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Wrong video. I don't I don't think you responded. I don't think you responded. Oh, my bad. My bad. I make those mistakes sometimes. Look, I don't want to pick on Zogby. I honestly don't. I, I even feel a tinge of guilt doing this. But what I want to point to is this kind of Zogby is emblematic of. That's what I want to get at. So I don't want people to think that I'm hitting at Zogby the person because Zogby is probably a perfectly nice person. That's not my goal. I apologize if this is brutal towards Zogby. But yes, I'm using him to make my case and to make my point. Door's right. You're living in a two paradigm system and you don't necessarily understand that you're outside. You can be outside of that system. It puts me in the mind of, um, there's an episode of Supernatural where Dean Winchester is, they've captured this angel, this overly powerful angel. And Dean Winchester is like joking him. He's like ribbing him. He's just being an asshole. But you have this magnificently powerful angel who exists outside of the typical human context, but he shoved himself into a human body in order to have this conversation. And Dean tricks him and traps him into this area. He can only trap him for a small period of time because he's a powerful angel. But Dean is still popping off at the lip, being an asshole to this magnificently powerful being. And this magnificently powerful being with all the love and compassion and grandiose power that a being could shove into a human body, looks at Dean and says, you're living in a godless world, boy. Now, I think, I don't know if he said boy. I think I'm adding the boy. But, but, but still, that you're living in a godless world. Now, what he's trying to get across him is, you're not understanding the situation to which you find yourself. You're living in this context that you believe is a particular way. And your universe, your reality is not that way. I feel that way about Zogby. It feels like, that feels like it is. Your understanding or his paradigm of the world is Democrat, Republican. And because you're stuck in that paradigm of the world, nothing changes. Doesn't matter what you do, nothing changes. Because at the end of the day, you will still be there. Vote Hillary. Vote Hillary. They can cheat your guy, still vote Hillary. They can depower you, which is what they did, in the purges while they were at the same token screaming that they were united at the top of their lungs, purging people like Zogby, who's Porter Sanders. Still vote Hillary. Still Democratic Party. Democratic Party forever. Doesn't matter what they do. You're the political equivalent of an abused spouse. Beat you, slap you, not wash their hands as they fix your ham sandwich sleep with the maid, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you still come back. They tell you you have nowhere else to go. You tell them you're right. And this thing keeps ticking along. I'm sick of the whining. I'm tired of the whining. You're, you're literally complaining that the DCCC is pushing out progressives. And this kind of gets to the root of the matter. Your paradigm of the world doesn't accommodate something else. And because your paradigm of the world doesn't accommodate something else, there is nothing pushing on the Democratic Party to change in any particular way. Why change? You may bitch, you may moan, you may complain, you may put out tweets, you may do all sorts of stuff, but at the end of the day, vote Hillary. I'm saying you don't have things pushing on the party, you don't have movements, you don't have anything to make that party do anything different. It's always 
vote Hillary. Because it's always vote Hillary, then it doesn't really matter all your bitching and moaning and protestations. At the end of the day, you still come back to the party and you still end up sheepdogging people to the party. Let me show you what I mean. So let's take a look at this first. Let's start here. Longtime DNC officials frustrated with the delegate shakeup. What do you mean delegate shakeup? Let's go back in time for a little bit, just for a year or two. Some prominent members of the Democratic National Committee's DNC are frustrated with the party's new slate of large at-large delegates. The move have drawn criticism from progressive-leaning Democrats who feel that the staff shakeup is retribution for the opposition to new chairman Tom Perez's February chairman race. NBC News first reported the grumblings over Perez's slate of at-large members on Wednesday night. Perez made his picks for the DNC at-large positions ahead of the week's fall meeting in Las Vegas. In some cases, Perez tapped those who had supported Keith uh, Ellis, who ran against Perez at the DNC race earlier this year. But in others, prominent members who supported Ellison during the chair race or Senator Bernie Sanders during the presidential race saw themselves demoted. Those DNC members included Ray Buckley, James Zogby, Alice Garman, Barbara Kaspar, etc., etc. Person I wanted, James Zogby, depowered. He was depowered. Vote Hillary nonetheless. It was Vox. Democrat establishment mouthpiece. Democrats test party test of party unity is off to a rocky start. Even Vox recognized it. <laughs> Even Vox. Right here. But some longtime allies, both Sanders and Ellis, argued that the new DNC chair should have done more to include members of the party's left flank and in particular criticized the decision to put what they view as allies of the party's old guard in key positions. It's what he did. It's not what, how they view it. They're not accommodating or even trying to accommodate the Bernie people, said James Zogby, a Sanders ally and founder of the Arab American Institute, who was not reappointed by Perez to serve on the DNC executive committee. I don't want this fight, and I still don't want to fight. have to fight, but I'm troubled. This doesn't look good. I don't want this fight and still don't want to have a fight, but I'm troubled. This doesn't look good. He's troubled. He's troubled. At the end of the day, however, still vote Hillary. Let's look at what they're talking about now. Fear chaos. National Democrats plunge into midterm primary fights. The Democratic message to my, uh, let's call it trend, was polite but unsparing. With half a dozen Democrats running for Congress in her Orange County district, they showed her a discouraging poll and argued that she could not win and risked fracturing the party in June primary election. Mrs. Trans pointed repeatedly, re pointedly replied that she was the only qualified woman, the only immigrant, and the only physician in the race. I said to them, frankly, let the voters decide, recalled Mr. Tran, Mrs. Tran, a pediatrician. The National Democratic Party was not chastened. On Wednesday, the Democratic National Con Congressional Committee took sides in the House race and backed Jill Casernos, a Navy veteran and former Republican. That's awesome. With their forceful intervention in Orange County, National Democrats have lunged into an impatient new phase of the 2018 primary race. One in which they are clashing more openly with candidates and local pol political chieftains in their drive to assemble a slate of recruits for the midterms. Essentially, they're getting their establishment picks in and they're putting their weight behind those establishment picks. Let's take a look. I mean, let's keep going. The approach is laced with peril for a party divided over matters of ideology and political strategy and increasingly dominated by activists who tend to resent what they see meddling from Washington. A Democratic effort to undercut a liberal insurgent in a Houston area congressional primary in March stirred an outcry from the left and may have inadvertently helped drive support to the candidate, Laura Moser, who qualified for the runoff election next month. But in some areas, Democratic leaders have concluded it is worth enduring backlash to help prize recruits or tame a chaotic primary field. I love the way they put that, a chaotic primary field. Democracy. Democracy is a chaotic primary field. Look, chaos is part of the electoral process. People get to make the decision on who they want in their race. Typically, you would think that that's what people want. 
are you doing this for public option or are you doing this because you want to put your thumb on the scale for the people who you yourself want in that race? That's an interesting question because it seems as if the Democratic Party has a workable point of view that it wants to maintain and is looking for candidates that maintains that very specific workable point of view. These troublesome lefties. These troublesome lefties. Fucking democracy. They're moving most aggressively in California where the state's nonpartisan primaries present a unique hazard. State law requires all candidates to complete in the same to compete in the same preliminary election with the top two finishers advancing to November. In a crowded field, the Democrats spread their votes across too many candidates, two Republicans could come out on top and advance together in a general election. Now, there, there are plenty of these, though. It's not just California. Uh, um, I've highlighted a few. House Majority PAC, a heavily financed Democratic group that spends millions in congressional elections, recently polled all four races and has been conducting digital surveys that simulate the complicated California ballot, according to people briefed with the group's strategy. The super PAC has run ads in California in the past when Democrats have faced disaster in primary seasons. Representative Judy Chu, a Los Angeles-based Democrat, said open primaries had led Democrats to take unusual steps to prevent Republicans from dominating the first round of voting. That would stop our goal of taking House back, Mr. Mrs. Chu said. We have to have a viable candidate, and I think that if it does turn out to be a Democrat versus a Republican, the Democrat will win. Mrs. Chu said the campaign committee's endorsement of Mrs. Mr. Chernos, Chernos was a signal to donors and volunteers that it's time to close ranks. But pick, pick, picking favorites is not easy for Democrats. Until mid-March, Southern California lawmakers were divided in the 39th district race between Mr. Ciceros, Ciceros, sorry, I'm horrible with names, who is backed by Representative Linda Sanchez, an influential member of the Democratic leadership team, and Jay Chen, another Democrat who endorsed Mrs. Chu. It was only after Mrs. Chen opted against running with a call for party unity that Mrs. Chu and other Democrats swung behind Saturnos. Essentially, the party of themselves are putting their weight behind certain people. Some voters sounded unlikely to take cues from national parties. Outside of Fullerton Coffee Shop, where Mrs. Jamal, Mr. Jamal was greeting voters, that wasn't me, Adam De Leon said he was suspicious of candidates using personal wealth to sway the, the race. Mr. D. Leon, 72, said he favored Mr. Jamal, 36, because of his government experience. What does it tell you when people spend millions of dollars to get a position that pays $140,000 a year? Mr. DeLon said, somewhat underestimating the $174,000 congressional salary. It's all about power and connections. Understand what, he's mean, what he means by this. This guy's a millionaire. Why are these people spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to get a position that's only paying $174,000? It's policy. It's because of what they can do once they get into that particular position. He's making the point that it's influence, and you don't necessarily trust what's coming from outside of his shores, meaning outside uh, uh, from Washington on this, the main party. For Democrats, the project extends beyond California. On the same day the DCCC endorsed Mr. Chernos, it also boosted candidates in New York and Arkansas who faced contested primaries. In New York, the committee enlisted Juanita Perez Williams, a former candidate for mayor of Syracuse, to challenge Representative John Katko this month. Through a low-profile low profile Democrat was already running with the support of local party leaders. There was already somebody running, and they tapped the person who they themselves wanted and who they put their backing into. We don't care about your local politics. This is what we want. D triple C. That kind of big footed may be trickier in California. Mr. Chen, the Democrat who opted out of the 39th district race, still says the party faces a precarious situation there. He said he had decided against running after conducting a poll that showed him neck and neck with Mr. Chernios and Mr. Thornbull, but with Democratic voters fragmented enough to create a Republican general election. So, Two things. Yes, this is what they're doing in California from the standpoint of, okay, we're terrified a Republican may take it. But they're doing this all across the country. It's so bad, in fact, 
Democratic Party is now publicly attacking progressive candidates. I'm putting all these articles at the bottom. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them. Progressives, the Democratic Campaign Committee, stop attacking us. Even Bernie Sanders has to get involved. Bernie Sanders warns Democrats about meddling in primaries. He would know. Bernie Sanders says it's simply unacceptable for the Democratic Congressional Committee to attack Texas candidate Laura Mosler and others. Why do you think they're attacking you? Why? Why? Why do you think they're doing it? You think they're just bad guys? Oh, what's the thing? What's the calculus here? They are attacking you because they can attack you. They can get away with attacking you because they understand that most of you, if you lose, if they put their thumb on the scale, in the same way they put their thumb on the scale with Bernie Sanders, that you will just go away. You're not going to challenge them for anything else. You're just going to go away. The goal of this is purely just to win. If I am the Democratic Congressional Committee, let's say I am a bunch of people are in a room, and we are making a determination of who we want, who has our workable point of view of what it means to be a Democrat, who will kowtow to our particular interests that we deem important? Who's in the club? Who's like us? And then you look around and you say, well, who's not like us? And the moment that you figure out who's not like us, you do things to undermine those candidates. Now, whatever you need to do to undermine those candidates in those particular races, however you put your thumb on the scale in those races, however you attack those candidates, is less important than the fact that you are attacking them and you are making their lives difficult. They're doing it because they can get away with it. They're doing it because they can do it. Fact is, your paradigm of the world doesn't account for anything else. Meaning the paradigm of the world that these Democrats, these lefties who are running within the Democratic Party, the James Zogbys of the world. And again, I'm not using him specifically as an individual. I'm talking about the people who are running in these primaries as a Democrat. It doesn't account for anything else. Meaning, if you are eliminated from that contest, you go home, you sit with your husband, your wife, and you watch the primaries, uh, you, meaning you watch the general election, and you probably will vote Democrat, despite them putting their thumb on a scale and rubbing you away. I'm sick of the whining. I'm sick of the whining. The Democratic Party has a clear interest. That interest, right here. The resistance will be underwritten by corporations. And let me tell you this. If the question becomes, will you kowtow to corporations in order to get that money, the answer is yes. If you're taking that money, you're leaning in a particular direction. That's, 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 they don't like you. They want your vote, but they don't like you. And for as long as you miss that point, like, like what I mean, but I, and I need to be very clear about this. For as long as they miss that point, that you're different. You're not in really the same party. I understand that you've attached yourself to this particular party, but they don't consider you to be equals anymore. Maybe at one point they did, not now. They look at you and they say you have nowhere else to go. And the fact is, if you can get somebody like Jake Uger screaming at the top of his lungs about how much he hates Hillary Clinton and still turns around and say, please vote Hillary Clinton. Rebel headquarters. Rebel headquarters. Look, I'm just trying to make a point. If your world view is only that there are two parties and you're rubbed out and cheated in that process, what are you going to do? If your world view only accommodates two parties, you're probably just going to after being rubbed out, still turn around and vote for the party that rubbed you out and cheated you. In the same way that Bernie Sanders voted for the party that cheated him and pushed for the party that cheated him. Vote Hillary. Democratic Party has an interest. That interest tends to lean towards corporations in the same way that Republicans does. It may be a little bit slightly less obsequious, but I would make the argument that that makes them to some degree even worse. It allows them to have this political gimmick as if they're somehow better Ultimately, they're just least worse. They're as obsequious to corporations as, as the Republican Party is with maybe a few shades less. Giving that party legitimacy from the standpoint of the left is somewhat problematic to getting anything real accomplished in this country. If you have two people, plutocrats and lefties, meaning workers, in the same party, the plutocrats are giving the Democrats large amounts of cash. Here's money. I'm putting money in your G-string. Now go out and parrot my objectives. And the lefties are screaming, listen to us. If the plutocrats are the ones that are giving them the cash, they're going to lean and listen to the people who are giving them the cash. 
Now, they may mutter things to you. They may say certain things to you. But when a deregulation bill comes up for the bank, they're going to vote for it. Many of them are. They're not going to stand up for DACA. They're not going to represent your particular interests. They're leaning in the direction of the cash. That's kind of the point I want to get at. This is going way too long, but this last point. The resistance will be underwritten by corporations. Grassroots fundraising strategy isn't enough. Democrats need the big money. They need the big money. On the floor, California's Bob Muland, after conceding, I'm not a member of the Mother Teresa's Sisters organization. I'm a member of the Democratic Party. Swam against the populist tide. All of the corporations in North Carolina who stood up for the Democratic Party platform against the law there to try to outlaw or discriminate against transgender people, why would the Democratic Party say now, hey, great what you did, but we're not going to take your contributions? Charles Stolmont of Utah, contended Democratic, ah, Jesus Christ, it's hard to see. Charles Stolmont of Utah contended Democrats can safely accept money from corporations as long as they understand I will treat you no differently because of it. While warning, we cannot afford not to take corporate money or we would disappear. The optics may be lousy, but the DNC made the right call. To maximize resistance to Donald Trump, Democrats need to win as many as the 2018 midterm elections race as possible, and they can't do it on $27 alone. That is literally a repudiation of everything Bernie Sanders stands for. We can take that money safely, and that money in no way would affect us. Because money in no way affects people. That's nonsense. That's utter nonsense. You're expecting people to believe that getting a billion dollars in no way is going to change the person's mind of getting that money. You expect people to believe that when they're giving cash, when these corporations are coming up and saying, look, here's all of this cash. Now, that person, that politician knows that that corporation is giving him that money. Knows it. He also knows that that money can go behind a different candidate. He also knows that that person may need a job once he gets out of office. They're, all the incentives for this go in the direction of the people who are giving the cash, not the rest of the population. It is nonsense. The public doesn't believe that. I'm sorry, the public doesn't believe you. The public believes if you're taking that money, you're doing favors for the people who are giving you that cash. You're leaning, maybe ever so slightly, in the direction of the people who are giving you that cash. Now, what I'm getting at here is, I don't think James Ogby believes this. I don't think many lefties believe this. I don't think many of those lefties who screaming that the Democratic Party is cheating them has that ideology, has that belief system that taking all of this money, taking all these gobs and gobs and rubbing themselves in the money, that rubbing themselves in the money in no way affects their integrity or the tenor to which they take or take or, or do those laws and operate in that office. If you don't believe this, James Ogby, if those lefties who's running in those races don't believe what this guy is saying here in this article, that they got to take the corporate money. They can't help but to take the corporate money. We've got to rub ourselves in that corporate money. Yes, we got to take the money. If you don't believe that, then why are you supporting a party that does? You've been cheated. You've been hoodwinked in one situation after the next. They cheated your guy outright and openly. They depowered you right now as they were screaming unity at the top of their lungs they were lying at the top of their lungs even if you go by donald brazil's account donald deborah walsman schultz had given all of this all of the rings over to the clinton camp by their own definition they were cheating even if you go by the WikiLeaks accounts even if you don't go to the electoral part you're still stuck with this understanding that they cheated your guy they cheated your guy and you're still there sheepdogging people into the party, believing that something is fundamentally going to change if you just keep on plugging away doing the exact same thing. You have nowhere else to go. And as long as you operate it under that model of you have nowhere else to go, you would indeed have nowhere else to go. And they can do whatever they want. And you would always find your way back to the party. The political equivalent of an abused spouse. Door's right. I don't think you get anything accomplished doing the exact same thing that you've always done and just banging your head over and over and over and over again. It doesn't work. Your strategy has failed. I mean, think back to what the Democratic Party was, let's say, during the Bill Clinton era. Do you believe that's a success? 
Do you believe that moving to Obama in that case is a success? Do you believe the successor, the heir apparent who was under FBI investigation, Hillary Clinton, was also going to be a success from the standpoint of lefties? At which point do you believe this was going to change? So come on. Let's see who's here. And you know what? I'll even take calls on this. The phone number's at the bottom, guys. If you think I'm wrong, feel free. But I don't think I'm wrong on this. Yeah, I don't think I'm wrong on this. I don't think I'm wrong on this. I mean, at the end of the day, if you believe fully, and my point here is those candidates should run independents as independents. If you run in the Democratic Party and you feel that you got didn't get a, for a fair deal, run as an independent. Stop bitching and moaning. Stop complaining. Stop whining. Stop crying. Run as an independent. Bear your teeth. If that means that Democrat loses, it means that Democrat loses. You're never going to get respect from that party if at the very least they believe that you're stuck within a nice sheepdog perspective or sheepdog way of events. So, let's see. Zorro. <laughs> Zorro, what's happening? Hey, what's going on? Not too much. It's tomorrow. What's going on, man? Thank you. Oh, uh, look, I mean, I can't really talk too loud because I'm in the library. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just happen to be catching your screen. I know we disagree on a lot of things, but I think you're right about, you know, the sheep talking and everything. And that's why I do talk to progressives. That's why, you know, you had like a really interesting stream with uh, Goodman last week. Yeah. And, you know, I did send you a lot of information about, you know, the research I've been doing about the San Diego issue with uh, the Mattis file. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Math file. You know, right. those, those people that are, are talking down there, they're more excited about this People's Party. And I'm wondering if you'd like to, um, if, if you've been hosting anybody from there or, or if you think it actually has any chance of getting... If it has any legs. So, it, it's solidarity of no, man. It, like, I, I don't... It's like, I don't know how you pull people out of the context of the two-party system. And because whether they realize it or not, it's until you finally say no, nothing changes. Like until they finally say, okay, I'm done with this. Then they, there's no way for them to wrap their heads around something else that may change. The People's Party, I love the People's Party thing. I, the, the Nick Piranha thing. I love what they're trying to do. I love the platform and everything else. We, we don't have anything to represent the left. It's fundamentally absent. So if they can bring something up, even if they can win one state, it would be mind blowing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I wish. I hope. My hope goes there, but I don't know if it has. I don't know if it has legs. Yeah, I, th I think um, you know it's kind of a struggle for me because you know I'm I'm definitely not a progressive, but yeah. I, you know I've been, I'm in Ohio and I see Dennis Kucinich who does represent uh, genuinely like a progressive message he has yeah. since 2004. I, I remember growing up hearing, hearing him speak and, and, you know, he's just getting stabbed in the back all the time. He's real. Um, I mean, he's, it's like whatever yeah. you think of Kucinich, Kucinich holds his shape. I mean, he, he's, he's Kucinich. He's been the same guy for the past God knows how many years. Um, and yeah, they're, they're taking a knife to him. I mean, they call him, got an Assad apologist <laughs> saying that the guy was <laughs> hugging Assad and all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I mean they could. They, I mean, I wouldn't say I agree with his position a hundred percent, but they're definitely like exaggerating it. They're portraying him as some sort yeah. of. Um, I don't even know what to call it. It's just bizarre. But anyway, um, apologies. I mean, it's like I a got... war-like culture, and he says, "Look, we shouldn't be over there. It's illegal, and yeah, we need to make sure that he's doing what they say he did." And they're like, "Oh my God, this guy's an apologist." Well. He doesn't want war. So, come on. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jamal, so I hope you did read my article. If you want to interview the people I talked to, they would be thrilled to come on your show. Um, there's two of them. They were both delegates at the DNC. Yeah. And they need to get their stories out. So please um, 
uh, if you have an email, I'll send you an email and I'll, I'll put you guys. My together. email is at the bottom. And, um, My email is always at the bottom, so feel free. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, I'll keep watching and uh, I guess keep up with the uh, work. Ah, oh, very cool, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, have a good night. <laughs> you too. I love the fact he's in a library. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Thanks, man. That's awesome. He's like I'm in a library. <laughs> Breaking the law. Breaking the law. Yeah. Democrats are running Obama tools against Dennis Kucinich, Jeff Olaf. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. I mean, they're putting a knife in the guy. Literally putting a knife in the guy. Liberals think it's impossible to set up a new party. The Green Party makes it seem hard because since Nader left them, they've done nothing. There's a reason Nader left the Green Party. Democratic Socialists of America have been winning seats. Now, I don't know where they were before they came out of the boonies and started winning seats. I don't think it's impossible. In fact, I think if you gave people a credible option, I think the people may even take that option. They just need to know that it's a credible option. If you could get it to that point, maybe. But what I will say, not ne- even if you don't necessarily have another way of expressing your political will, that is no reason for you to still associate yourself with the Democratic Party. Those run separately. That's what I am saying. Run separately. I understand James Zogby wants to be affiliated with the Democratic Party. I get it. I understand they want sheepdog. I get it. And again, this is not me attacking James Zogby. So I feel slightly bad that I'm using a person in this. But nothing changes. Like you get nothing from doing that. Those people, I guarantee, this is what I would guarantee you. If those people said, we felt like we were cheated. We were going to run as a third party. We are going to run as independents. We are going to run in the primary, in the main election. And we're going to, yes, we're going to pull votes from the left. That's showing teeth. That's you saying, I'm unhappy and dissatisfied with what's taking place. And I'm staying with a foundation of no, and I'm going to run as an independent. That's what should take place. That's what uh, people always give me shit when I say this, but this is what a real man would do. I don't care whether it's women or men. I'm saying this from the standpoint of they are cheating you. They are screwing with the electoral process. If you honestly believe that this is this thing of, you know, you need to represent your votes and everything else or, or um, represent the people who want to vote for you or, or for that matter, democracy, representative government, give people an actual choice. Yes, if you believe in giving people an actual choice, run in the general. If you believe you were cheated, run in the general. Say fuck all to the party system run in the general as an independent. That shows teeth. That's not whining. That's not crying. There's no crying in politics. That shows teeth. That gets across to them we're not going to put up with the shit in the way that this goes. That's what it does. Whining doesn't. Crying on Twitter doesn't. Crying on Twitter doesn't. Show your teeth. That's my point. I understand these people want to sheepdog into the party. That is not your method of, of, of any level of success. Showing your teeth gets across one or two things. Either that party has to change or that party has to die. And if that means that that Democrat can't get elected, then that means that Democrat can't get elected. Just saying. Oh, God. Bashar al-Assad gives 10 bucks. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's utterly hilarious. Oh, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. It's like Putin give me my goddamn check. <laughs> that's so fucking funny. Oh, man. That's funny. That's funny. Well, Bashar, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate your contribution. Can you please stop using those fucking barrel bombs? And if it comes out that you've done the chemical strike, you are the dumbest SOB on the planet. The Tea Party did survive and helped elect Donald Trump. Glenda, that is true. They did survive. Pat, that is unfair. I know anti-Israel Jews. Okay, I don't know the conversation you guys are having. Um, Authentium, refund it immediately, Jamal, or you won't be getting Saudi check. <laughs> right, right. You can't get that Saudi money if you take that money from Bashar al-Assad. Well, Hillary Clinton was able to take millions of dollars. Did you see the thing that Jimmy Dore put up where he showed um, 
um, Kerry talking about all of these other governments are willing to essentially give the United States money to be hitmen, to use the United States military as just a strike force in order to attack Bashar al-Assad. He says, yeah, they're willing to pay for it all. What do you mean they're willing to pay for it all? The blood and treasure also? You mean the United States troops, the men and women who are going to go to that place and do the dirty work of those particular countries? Even if they paid for it all, they can never pay for it all. It's fucking amazing. Bob Ramirez said, my point is that the Republicans will have more viable populist opinion, but they stayed establishment. Yes, Bob, that's true. Like, like if you notice, they haven't changed their disposition. The only thing that they change is the optics. So it made it look like Democrats were the more corporatist party. Democrats are a corporatist party. But by the same token, it made it look like Republicans were the resistance. Republicans are not the resistance. Democrats were screaming that they're the resistance, but this kind of populist fervor ended up on the Trump side. It's so bizarre. I mean, the idea that a blue-collar billionaire um, in a populist election beat a Democrat is, is staggeringly sad. Vote Republicans just like H. and Jamal. I am not voting Republican. That's fucking insane. I will be voting for Jill Stein again in 2020. If Jill Stein, I don't know if Jill Stein is going to run again. What I'm hoping is Tulsi Gabbard runs. Tulsi Gabbard will get my vote. Nina Turner will get my vote. Bernie Sanders will get my vote. Everybody else up to this point can fuck off. They can fuck off. A barrel bomb is just improvised ordnance used when supplies are more powerful bombs are low. Winslow. Yeah, Winslow, I, I agree with you, which is why I kind of made that point like, it's. I, I think I use the analogy. Um, my wife and I were in Iceland. Now I'll end it on this because it's going long. My wife and I were in Iceland, and we're walking back from. Um, it's like a, a a patio type thing, but this is building. It's like a government building. And as we're walking back, sorry, I'm getting stopped up, guys. As we're walking back, there's this waterway where there's like all of these geese and swans and everything else, and this duck had its babies ducks you know ducklings kind of following behind it it's the cutest thing you've ever seen and then out of the blue in the blink of an eye a swan swoops in grabs one of the ducks eats it and flies off now everybody here is shocked by this like they're a gap what the fuck just happened it's like oh my god he just they just took that little baby duck and he ate that baby duck and he flew off and then they start trying to hit at the swan with a stick in order to get them to release the swan. But, uh, the duck, but at that point, the duck was dead. My wife was like, did that duck not see that that swan was praying nearby? What the fuck is wrong with ducks? And now she hates swans. She hates she thinks swans are the worst thing on the planet. And so as we walked, we went to a burger joint and we sat and we ate this really good hamburger. And she tells me how much and how horrible it is that the swan ate that duck. That swan, as I explained to her while we ate a hamburger together, didn't have the means of getting somebody to kill its prey. It didn't have the means of somebody doctoring it up so it would look pretty. It didn't have a chef to cook it for. And it didn't have, you know, bread places where you could put a bun around it. It didn't have those things at its disposal. So all it had at its disposal was to eat it himself. Now, my wife may have the means in which to pay for these things in order so somebody else can do the dirty work for her. But at the end of the day, somebody was doing the dirty work of killing that cow, cutting that cow up, putting it in slices, and putting it on a bun. It is easy for us to point the finger for some of the stuff of saying, oh my God, we hate X, or we hate Y. Completely missing the point that the reason why X and Y exists is because maybe they didn't have the capacity to do it in a different way. He's using barrel bombs because he doesn't necessarily have the ordinance that the United States has. If he did, he would be using the ordinance that the United States has or, or the means or the weapons or whatever. My wife is okay with killing and eating meat. She just didn't necessarily like the way that it was done. I'm making a point that we support all sorts of people who do bad and horrible things around the world that kill in more efficient ways. In this case, complaining about the barrel bomb, the chemical strike, it's like, you guys are bitching and moaning about how it's done, not the fact that it's taking place. Um, and not just that, bitching about that specific case without with giving a blind eye to all of these other cases. It's like, it's like come on. I, I, I guess, I hope my point is clear. I know that's a long way of chopping a lot of wood. I'm just making this point that if killing is taking place all across the globe, why are we being specific to these 
very specific things and it looks a little dicey when people are very specific in the sense of the way they use justice in these specific terms while ignoring the injustices going on everywhere else so all right i'm going to end this um i've had a lot of these that i wanted to do today so i still have yeah I still have very many more. So I have a few that I wanted to get to tonight. And like I said, tomorrow I have Gerald Horn. And that is going to be an amazing interview. And I to some degree need to prepare for that. But I'll end it here. Hope I made my point. I am not trying to pick on Zogby. So if Zogby stumbles upon this video, this is not me punching at you, dude. This is more so punching at the strategy of being this complicit in the things that take place with the Democratic Party. That's my issue. That's my issue. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, and subscribe. And, of course, you can always support the patron. Thanks, everyone.